have you guys seen the Ethereum L1 workshop that's ha gonna happen before DevCon? I think this is the one that will have the most people by far, I think. Or we were already like 180 people in Austria. Um, yeah, um, what's the question exactly? That we're gonna be a lot, a lot of people. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, there's more of us. Uh, I guess Guillaume, are you are you aware of uh, Justin Drake's beam chain from that proposal? Yeah, yeah. And you TLDR uh, that because I'm I'm not actually TLDR. What is that? TLDR. Uh, yeah. So okay, this is a <laughs> this is something that's um, you know it's it's coming from Justin Drake. So think of it as something five years in the future maybe 10 years in the future uh the idea is that uh yeah they want to start from scratch by simply uh redesigning the beacon chain the beacon chain and uh making it uh, like basically solving all the mistakes that were made okay maybe mistakes is a bit of a strong word but for example if you look at quantum resistance, uh, the whole beacon chain is built around BLS, which is not quantum secure. So if you want to um, fix the beacon chain, it's going to take a very long time. And uh, right, so the idea was that maybe what we should do is start a new chain um, that would you know, be a so somewhat a conversion of the beacon chain into something that is quantum secure and that has a lot of other properties that i don't have uh, that i can't think of uh, from the top of my head but there's a lot of things that looked like a good idea when the beacon chain was designed but we're not uh, not such a great choice after all um so they would yeah basically it's a beacon chain uh, story from scratch with uh, all the to fix all the problems uh, resolved, and this time it will be pro perfect. We promise. That's funny. Okay, thanks for the context. I mean, maybe it's a bit of an. Um, so, it's a bunch of very deep changes on the beacon chain uh, that will just be packaged together into a non-progressive fork, to put it in a way. Uh, as Guillaume was saying. Quantum resistance is the big one. We have to change all the cryptography, and this is um, a radical change. So as that that we're doing that, uh, we also want to change the four choice into, uh, we want to change the four choice, we want to change to SSF. We want to have some sort of IL mechanism. So it's kind of a lot of things that maybe make sense to do them at once in a coordinated fashion, and that would be maybe more efficient and easy than just going progressively one by one. Because a few of those changes are like breaking changes in a way, like quantum resistance. But we're talking about something that's years yeah. out and certainly not happening in 2025. No. Or could that happen in a smaller scope? OK. I mean, it can always happen in a smaller scope, right? This is what uh, the, the merge was about. Like the initial design of the beacon chain of the whole uh, Ethereum 2.0 is not complete, right? We don't have shards. We don't have uh, like different execution engines. Um, so let's say the, the beacon chain was, or I'd say Ethereum as it is, is a compromise, uh, a compromise, sorry, compromise compared to what we planned. Uh, so there's still a lot of ideas that were never implemented that we would still like to have. Uh, but I can't promise you that what, like, you know, Justin Drake is he's the idea guy. Uh, now there's a lot of work that needs to happen to see how we can we can make it real. This is going to take time. So, uh, yeah, I don't see anything happening before 2030, uh, maybe a bit before. But uh, I would not panic about this. 
like I said, it's just an idea. There's going to be a lot of iterations before we even start working on it. Uh, right. Yeah, the, the, the next phase is uh, the spec. So, right. That will only that will take like at least a year, probably more. Um, and yeah, like there's a lot of like. Once again, I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, bad mouthing uh, Justin, but yeah, he's uh, he's definitely here to bring the ideas. Now we have to make it work. Uh, there's one thing that uh, Lion didn't mention is that part of his idea would be to um, do a lot of the transition function as uh, zk proof. So instead of having every client re um, you know re-execute every uh, every like small detail of the execution of the of the transition function uh, you would get a, a zk proof of that or a snark proof or start proof of that um st s in stark stands for succinct so it's just a proof that saves you the trouble of re-executing everything and uh, so what you would get is maybe instead of having uh, client diversity you would have prover diversity so uh you know it's it's just an idea that's still up in the air right now but I'm just mentioning this so that you understand. It's a huge redesign of the way Ethereum works. And I don't think it's going to take a year to get the spec. I think it's going to take, uh, yeah, like five years if you are if you want to be optimistic. Yeah, so that's why I was bringing it up that if we're going to smartify everything, does it make sense to go over code? <laughs> you know how to make me happy. Uh, yes, I think it makes sense to go vertical uh, because um, vertical has benefits. Uh, okay, I could go on. Uh, I don't really want to hog the entire uh, ACD uh, just for this, but I, I think like vertical is more like an idea of something you get in one year and two years. Uh, this stuff is going to be, you know, happening in five years at best, and by then you could still you know we don't know what's going to happen in terms of quantum resistance in terms of zk performance i think whatever the idea is today will have a lot of iteration will have a lot of um a lot of uh modifications so uh it might make i mean right now we can't make this kind of decision i i'd say it makes sense to go with what we have and upgrade it later because you know the beam chain is precisely a complete redesign of everything so what, let, let's worry about the the state, like the shape of the state, when we get there. Yeah, Marek. Yeah, I, I think I tend to agree with Guillaume because kind of because of not having verticals, we are waiting with a, a few improvements on L1, like for example, increasing gas limit, right? And we don't want to increase it too much to uh, to mess up with transition. Or we are waiting with state expiry. We don't have statelessness, and if we uh, we will see when when this idea will be when uh, one year from now when we will be closer to verticals. But just you know, waiting for one idea that that we don't know when it will be formed as a spec is not not that good. But we will. We, I think we should observe that topic. And I'm not sure if you DM you agree with me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We should definitely uh, we should definitely uh, observe that topic. I mean the whole. Uh, binary tree vertical thing is designed so that you can swap everything last minute. I mean, more or less last minute, let, let's say last six months. Um, but uh, yeah, exactly like you said, I would say this is ex also exactly what happened with the merge, right? We had this great idea, but everybody was just waiting, like especially the guest team. I can tell you we were waiting. We said, we'll work on it when everything settles right it never really settled so this is when uh michael kalinin and i stepped in and said we're going to have this uh honestly horrible design of having two clients uh, i mean okay it's not horrible it works great but it's um you know it's not it's not what you would think of uh, as a very well thought through design that uh, very streamlined let's say um but at least we have the merge right so it's not perfect but we got the merge. But what I'm saying is until, let's say from 2018 to 2021, was that when the merge happened? Yes, 2021. Um, the number of major fork that happened was effectively zero. It was only tweaks like delaying the difficulty bomb, et cetera. 
Uh, I'm afraid that if we start stopping everything and wait for the beam, ch uh, beam chain to be designed, we're going to be in the exact same situation where nothing will happen until we have a design. And because it's an currently it's at an idea stage, it will evolve and you know it can evolve forever is what I'm saying. And Ethereum is effectively dead. So yeah, that's why I think there's no reason to stop anything until we have a plan and I would say prototypes and things like this. But once again, that's going to take years. Hey, um, Guillaume, is, is there like a, a write-up about the beam chain or somewhere we can read more about it? Um, not that I'm aware of. There was a presentation made internally by Justin Drake. Um, I'm sure there's a write-up somewhere, but I can tell you that um, Justin Drake is working on a presentation at DEF CON about this very topic. Um, so you want to make sure you attend that uh, that talk. Uh, if I find something, I'll send it your way, uh, or I'll share it on the Gnosis Core Dev uh, channel. Um, but as far as I'm aware, there is currently no write-up. Okay, thank you. Uh, but I would say, again, Beam Chain is just a collection of things that are have extensive literature. So. Just read about Orbit SSF, snarkifying everything, like both in EL and CL. Um, fossil, quantum resistance, like switching to Poseidon hash, blah, 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 all, all these things. Because at the end, just the beam chain is kind of a meme on the roadmap, basically. OK. I enjoyed the tangent very much, but it's over. So welcome everyone to today's core dev call. Philip cannot join, so I'll be leading. So let's go through the agenda. Let's start with infrastructure gateway. Any updates? Hello. Uh, updates from gateway. During last week, we were creating a consensus layer RPC. It's a little more time needed to finish this uh, than what I expected. Adapt uh, health checks. Uh, they should have some finishing state at the beginning of next week. Beginning of next week. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, um, so we're planning to cut a release branch with uh, Shutter over the next uh, day or so. Um, and I've made a pro uh, proposal to change the Shutter spec slightly um, to make the process of uh, registering validators easier. Um, so it basically uses uh, BLS aggregation so that you only have to submit one uh, registration instead of one for each validator key. Um, so I'm discussing that with the Shutter team, and I have an implementation in the Nethermind client. Um, yeah, that's it at the moment. Thank you. Testing Hive. Uh, hello, regarding Hive, we have added a new simulator, LPC Combat, and uh, include new 20 tests. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Ethereum slash tests. Regarding uh, Ethereum, Marcus have created a mesh request for the test tool, but uh, currently there are some issues, so we need uh, also to fix it. Uh, you want to add anything from your end, Devjit? Um, currently on Ethereum test, I'm trying to get it working, but there is a T810 tool issue. Like it is doing one part of the job, it is creating the failed state, but not creating the blockchain state tests. So I've notified Nethermind and yeah, they are looking into it. Thank you. Client updates, Nethermind. Hi, 
so currently we are testing uh, master branch and preparing for new release. Probably next week we'll be having release candidate, but because of DEF CON, we will release the full version after DEF CON, just to not have a time for reaction in case anything bad will happen. From interesting things, uh, we improv improved quite significantly our in-memory pruning, which gives us additional extra boost of uh, speed on the tip of the chain. And we have a few other interesting uh, features, but this is one of the major things which we achieved in this one. But yeah, we will be having release candidate next week, and then we'll be sharing some more detailed uh, results. For now, it looks like it's 15% better processing. Thank you. Uh, Erigon. No, nothing major. Yes. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to remember where I was at last week, but um, I was uh, like, there's this process of re like full syncing the chain, which unfortunately I will have to start again uh, because I didn't enable pre-image recording. So that might be useful for, uh, for REF um, when we get there. But anyway, so I was uh, uh, full syncing the chain, which takes some time, like it's supposed to take two weeks. I just got past uh, Shanghai and one of the blocks failed. Uh, I expected this because, uh, yeah, that I mean, when I did the rebase, I was expecting that thing to like or something around Shanghai to fail. I, I did a tweak. Uh, I'm currently, I just got a dump of uh, mainnet and a dump of what I need to, like what Geth is, is doing. So I know it has to do with cre contract creation. I was just about to, uh, um, I mean, to dig into this as uh, the call started. Um, so hopefully it's not gonna take me too long, but apart from that, uh, yeah, it's been producing blocks on mainnet. Uh, it's been producing blocks on Chiado. It's following Chiado without a problem. Apparently it's following mainnet without a problem either. Um, so snap sync works is just full sync. Full sync seems to be broken around one specific block in Shanghai, uh, right after Shanghai. So I'm investigating this. Uh, yeah, and then I still want to activate the live tracer. Oh, okay, so the live tracer is active, but I want to activate it for system call tracing, which I think is going to be useful for REF afterwards, and uh, or potentially debugging if something goes wrong. And uh, Marcos told me helping me when uh, when the test framework is ready. So I'm also hoping to tackle that at some point. Um, but yeah, these are the things I know I still have to do. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Red? Yeah. So Red used to. Uh, I mean, it, it was mandated to import blocks before importing the state. So I'm making the change where you can import state without the historical data. Uh, the PR just got merged in Reth's code base. So I have to update no, Reth Gnosis's code base to take advantage of that. And then, yeah, we can directly import state, which is exported from get, hopefully, at the merge. So we, we had a quick debate with Devjit about this. And hopefully, like I know your advice, Guillaume, on uh, just going for, for pre-merge. However, uh, currently Red doesn't support uh, diverging block structure. So we cannot uh, do that as of now which, without a fork, which we, we want to avoid. However, with EIP 4444, uh, I think one of the potential consequences of that is that clients would have the option to remove pre-merge code. Um, so I wonder if we should take advantage of that, that opportunity and not bother with that code. And I'm wondering, what do you guys plan to do with, with that regard? But isn't not a problem still for ref will be to acquire the state uh, 
post-merge state. So, like, you know, EAP for force is just about removing blocks, but you, uh, your problem will be that you will still have to acquire the state. I might be mistaken, but just sharing with you. Yeah, to acquire the state will probably, um, a nice solution would be to serve it over torrent, like the, the, the state of the merge, and then just full sync from there. Uh, I guess eventually Rev should have snap sync at some point. Um, I'm not sure if Rev can have snap sync. Well, okay, I guess maybe. It's just that it's not going to be super easy because, uh, um, yeah, like everything is stored plain, uh, like all the keys are, you know, plain, like pre images, they're not hashed. So that would require a lot of hashing. Which might be done is just uh, yeah. I don't think it's designed for this. So, but maybe they maybe they will implement it. Um, I just wanted to to say I don't think providing the state would be a big problem as long as someone, which I plan to do, uh, comes up with a full sync that with pre image uh, enabled. Um, but yeah, I think uh, EIP four fours is really profitable to to gnosis chain because it has two like something like 2.5 times the blocks um and uh like the reason why it takes me two weeks to full sync is not because the state is big i i measured it it's like uh 100 gigabytes it's really not that large it's uh, almost half of uh, of mainnet but you are doing one block every five seconds that takes forever to download and that takes forever to replay even though a lot of times especially at the beginning the chain is pretty much empty but you execute a block every every five seconds you recompute the, the root hash um, i think eip44 is super good for for gnosis chain and we should totally uh, focus on that honestly uh try to make it happen faster um because that's that's godsend for for gnosis chain yeah. so i was actually talking with ashraf yesterday who is um uh, working on uh, eap 4 fours and on currently is polishing arrow one files as well as working on portal network integration uh, so in terms of era one files i think never mind would be can be ready relatively soon. By soon, I still mean like some month or two at least uh, to do so all the testing, etc., and and polishing and you know rolling it out. We don't want to roll out prematurely. Uh, yeah, so it's progressing good. I have a PR actually to review to for, for it tomorrow. So uh, there is some progress on it, and we are making good progress there, uh, Marek. Uh, one thing we won't uh, like drop the code for all all the blocks because we want to support uh, archive. So uh, yeah, uh, even we will have for force, we won't be like uh, removing code that uh, supports all blocks. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to mention the link that I said. So um, whenever we uh, do smoke testing, and we are doing it quite often to test Nethermind on all chains, uh, we automatically updating these database sizes. So you can see that Gnosis right now state is only 66 gigs on, on Nethermind, of course, and blocks are 200 gigs and receipts 217. So just, just FYI, that might be interesting. So you can probably get to around 100 gigabyte, right? Uh... Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Note. Mm -hmm. And the, the other thing is about for force is that for Ethereum mainnet, I wanted to discuss if we want to drop receipts at first. And my argument is that receipts can be regenerated while you know blocks um, you need to have a very good way to preserve history and, and all portal network integration will take time. So, but for Nozis chain, we are in better situation because, uh, you know, we can we can say that torrents are good enough for Nozis chain and think later about portal. But that's my way of thinking, and of course we can uh, discuss it. But yeah.
uh, yeah, so I know Peter. Peter's opinion has always been that we never promised we would keep the receipts forever. Like it's it's never been a promise uh, in the protocol, from what I understand. It's only necessary because yeah, we have to download them when we sync. Uh, I know Marius was looking into this at some point, dropping the receipts. Uh, I don't know what happened with that effort, but I think we could drop the receipts tomorrow and nobody would miss them. So yeah, maybe one thing to do in Petra. Uh, why why do you need those receipts right now? Is it like connected with your staff sync or what? Because for Nethermind, they are not needed at all. I'm just, just thinking, uh, why, um, why do you need that? Okay. Maybe I spoke too fast. I yeah, I am under the impression that no, actually we don't. You're right. Um, yeah, okay. Then I guess uh, even better. Yeah, I'm just thinking that receipt is just you know proposing in you know, all and 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 removing it, and maybe maybe we can test um, those, those era file storage solution thanks to that. See how community reacts and so on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I guess uh, I guess we should push for that. Uh, regardless, that would be uh, like even in mainnet, that would be a good a good thing. So I I know it's weird I ask you guys this, but if Rev requires a full sync today, how will they sync post four fours? They have to. Um be able to get the um, blocks from a different source um, well if we don't if we drop only receipts it's not a problem right they will get the blocks generate receipts by processing but if we drop the blocks too they have to get the blocks from the era one files or portal network if enabled on that uh, available for that uh, machine what? or or the, what they probably do also can do a regon style snapshots uh or i don't know if they already have the snapshot so having the snapshot of the chain at some point and just downloading that and going forward right so those are the options but i think it is not the client question because what the client wants to do uh, correct me if i'm wrong is to avoid implementing all the logic uh that, that is pre-merged in aura and i think it might be not that easy to avoid. So that, that's how I get you the plan. No, we, we, we have a plan to do that and we, we can avoid it. But it, it, in that case, red will not be a, an archive node. Yep. But that's something we, we want to we want to support in the future, but red has to have some way to allow the blog structure to be customized, which doesn't support yet. Yes. Okay, I think I brought up the topic. Uh, that's all from me. So uh, circling back, so uh... What are the timelines we are thinking about for force here on Gnosis? ASAP, and maybe um, once we have era files, we can do receipts at first, see how you know community reacts, how yeah, and then blocks. But then... Okay, Marek, what what is ASAP? Uh, we probably need to uh, polish and test it on our side. That's probably a month or two. Uh, then we need to generate the R1 files and cross-validate them with our clients. Uh, so kind of part of the testing. Uh, and then potentially we need a, a hosting solution, either peer-to-peer -peer or, or, or static hosting too, maybe for backup. Uh, and then we can probably like production ready must, must uh, um you know uh, enable it on mass right on production so it sounds like optimistically we can maybe free for months but uh, yeah we will see that's how i get you cash uh, yeah, yeah so it's, it's still you know it's close but it's it still needs a bit 
a bit of work, right? And focusing on that and polishing it a bit, making sure it works on edge cases, etc. Cross client. Uh, well. Yeah, four months. I mean, it's just my opinion, but three, four months would actually be uh, pretty good because at least Julio's documents um I, I told him i'd make fun of him if it doesn't happen but julio's prediction based on his numbers is that we'll run out of uh, this space on mainnet like ethereum mainnet in six months so if you can deliver that in four months i'd say uh that's that's a game changer even on mainnet yes even even on your receipts for net mainnet because i think People will disagree about removing blocks without, you know, full portal integration and so on. But receipts, yeah. Okay. Any other more comments on this topic? Cool. Let's move on. <clears throat> CL. Uh, I don't think we have anything to add. Spectra. Oh, updates. Yeah, I think that. Uh, thank you, Nethermind, for starting to do some testing. Appreciate it. Um. Yeah. We'll... <laughs> Uh, we'll lost here. I, I'm not sure we you know what is the status of preparation for that. Okay, well, we can ask Carlos Async. Yeah. Pro probably he's working on uh, those devnets and Dimitra is working on testing uh, Spectrum. Cool. And research, I think this is duplicated from above. We already got updates from Shutter. Nothing to add from my side. Cool. So any other topics or comments? Okay, so one, two, three. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a good week, see you soon. Thanks, bye. thanks. Bye. bye. Thank bye. you, bye. Bye. bye.